first at four, historic and horrific. We are tracking Harvey's impact, the rescues, evacuations, and rain that just won't stop. We're live in Texas, and Help Me Hank is getting to work. Hank. Karen, we're live in the phone bank. Help for Houston, local four teaming up with the Red Cross. We're going to show you how you can get involved and help those affected by the tragedy in Texas. First at four, the view from above is heartbreaking. So many Houston homes underwater or surrounded by floodwaters. The entire Texas National Guard now being deployed this afternoon. That is 12,000 troops ready to respond. Meantime, about 2,600 flood victims are seeking shelter right now at Houston's Convention Center. They're already out of cots, waiting for more to arrive. City officials are hoping the center has enough room for up to 5,000 people. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. Even as you see what Houston looks like now, the scary thing is the rain has not stopped and won't stop for days. The nation's fourth largest city held hostage by this stubborn storm system. For the latest, let's go to Sonia McGee. Seven people are now believed to have died. Harvey-related deaths, five of them right here in Harris County. Uh, officials now saying that they are waiting back for autopsy results to see if they were flood related. And as you can see behind me, flood waters are high in hundreds of streets across the Houston area. The situation is so bad that people from out of state uh, officials, uh, law enforcement officers, even National Guard troops coming in from across the country. Uh, even the U.S. military is now offering the support of troops, even warships. And across the border, the Mexican government also offering boats, food, or any other assistance that Texas may need. You could not draw this forecast up. Uh, you could not dream this forecast up. Across the sprawling Houston metro area, pleas for help. We're actually trapped in our street. We cannot leave. We cannot move. And anxious waiting for that help to come with emergency management stretch well beyond limits. We've been sitting there waiting on somebody to come by and help us. While Monday was another day of disbelief and sorting through the devastation of Harvey's landfall in Rockport. We just lost everything I worked for. Uh, everything. It was another day of soaking rains in Houston, already saturated with trillions of gallons of water. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner faced more questions on whether the city should have evacuated. He cited potential perils of a mass effort and the unpredictable storm. It's kind of hard to, to plan for anything when you don't know whether it's going to hit. Further north, Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings spoke of plans to welcome evacuees. The city's main convention center set to become a mega shelter for 5,000 people. We're getting ready to be the neighbors and the friends of South Texans that we know we can be. Donations are also pouring in, not just from the Red Cross, but also from sports teams. The Houston Texans owner pledging a million dollars. So is the National Football Foundation, as well as the New England Patriots, all pledging a million dollars in aid to come to Houston and other parts of Texas that have been affected. I'm live in Sugarland, Texas, Sonia Mogi. All right, thank you, Sonia. Meantime, let's go to Ben Bailey. He's tracking Harvey, and we could have some heavy showers from the result of that hurricane here in Metro Detroit. Ben. Yeah, the remnants of Harvey is something we may be dealing with over Labor Day weekend, but this is just not ending down here in Houston. Same but difference, a good way to describe the radar. Yesterday we were looking at bands of heavy rain and even a tornado threat. Now it's just solid rain and it is over some of the same areas. This stretch of I-45 between Houston and Galveston has been hit the hardest and you can see there's plenty of those moderate and even heavy showers still on top of them as the core of Harvey is right now just off the Texas coast. This is the two o'clock advisory. We'll get a fresh one here in just about an hour from the Hurricane Center, but the official track takes it back out into the Gulf into this extremely warm water, making another landfall here by 7 a.m. on Wednesday as a tropical storm and then accelerating finally to the north and getting it out of Texas by Saturday. That'll be near the boot heel of Missouri and we'll start looking for at least some impact on us as we head into the Labor Day weekend. Just showers and a couple thunderstorms out here right now. We are not anticipating anything severe, but we are going to see scattered showers at least to the evening tonight. Temperatures down to the mid 60s at midnight, and we will look at the rain continuing on Tuesday. Plus, our local forecasters app is all brand new. If you haven't downloaded our brand new update, go do it in your app store. It is all for free. Just search WDIV. Karen.
All right, thank you, Ben. Organizations right here in Michigan are working to bring relief to those affected by Harvey. The Coast Guard is sending 12 people along with two helicopters and three airboats. Atlas Oil is deploying dozens of fuel trucks to those in need of generator fuel, including hospitals. And Disaster Relief at Work, also known as DRAW, is sending thousands of buckets filled with supplies along with some other things that those down in Texas may need right now. The first few days, they're, um, what they need is somebody to care. They're in shock. Their lives have been upended. But the minute the waters recede, you've got to go in and tear out all the sheetrock. You've got to get all the, the waterlogged furniture out to the street. Some people just need somebody to hug them or to pray with them. Now, when disaster strikes, our Help Me Hank unit is always ready to help those in need. Today, we're working with the Red Cross to get help to folks in Texas and all along the Gulf Coast. Hank Winchester is live in the Help Me Hank phone bank right now with really what people can do to help. And I know everyone is wanting to do something. They just don't know exactly where to turn. Exactly, Karen. And the images that we've been seeing from the state of Texas, uh, specifically from Houston, it's, it's really unbelievable. These people need our help. They need financial assistance also. That is why we are working as a station with the Red Cross. We have volunteers right here uh, in our phone bank right now, taking your information, taking your donation. Any dollar amount can help make a big difference to the people of Texas that are suffering. The number you can call right now to our phone bank is 313-298-WDIV. Again, 313-298-WDIV. Uh, the Red Cross from Southeastern Michigan has already sent so many volunteers down to the Lone Star State to help. They are working to get water to those who need it. They are working to get people into shelters, into hotels, into safe areas. Thousands of people throughout the state have had to leave their homes behind and their homes have been destroyed. The Red Cross is the team that is on the ground right now and so many volunteers and members of the Red Cross team from southeastern Michigan in Texas right now doing that hard work and, and they need the financial support. The people in that community in Texas desperately need it. Again, the number you can call right now, the phone lines have already been active, 313-298-WDIV. Karen will also post information for people to donate on the Help Me Hank page at Click on Detroit.com and also on the main site of our website, Click on Detroit. We will continue to work with our volunteers here from the Red Cross uh, throughout our evening newscast, Karen, and we'll check in with you later this afternoon. Back to you. All right, we'll check in with your progress at five and six. Thank you, Hank. President Trump and members of his administration have been closely monitoring the impact of Harvey. The president will fly to Houston tomorrow to view the government's response. The president directed government efforts over the weekend, providing updates on Twitter, and the president will be holding a news conference soon with the president of Finland. We expect him to talk about Harvey. We will be monitoring his comments and have an update tonight at 5. Our coverage of Harvey's impact is just getting started. New at 5, members of the Detroit Lions are talking about their connections to Houston. Some players and coaching staff have family down there. Also, at ClickOnDetroit.com, we're streaming continuous coverage from our sister station, KPRC in Houston. They're bringing you up-to-the-minute coverage of the ongoing disaster. And all the resources of NBC News will bring you live team coverage on Nightly News with Lester Holt tonight at 6.30 right here on Local 4. And this Aladdin man faces federal charges after an FBI counterterrorism investigation reveals he lied about owning a stockpile of weapons. 28-year-old Yusuf Mohammed Ramadan was stopped from boarding a flight to Jordan with his family by FBI agents back on August 15th. After interviewing Ramadan, agents searched a storage unit where they found weapons without serial numbers, including parts to an AR-15 rifle. Ramadan is being held in the Wayne County Jail. A detention hearing is scheduled for tomorrow. Still ahead, it is game on in the battle for your grocery business. A big new player dropping prices to save you money. Also, he's already convicted of murder. Now a man who was supposed to care for people is a suspect in many more deaths. The story is shocking people all around the world. Paula. This is how technicians look for seizures. And believe it or not, you could be one of more than 100,000 Michiganders suffering seizures, and you don't even realize it. I'll explain. They say they... The Help Me Hank phone bank is in action right now, helping victims of Hurricane Harvey. You can make any donation to the Red Cross right now by calling the number on your screen. That is 313-298-WDIV. Again, 
298 WDIV. Phone lines will be open through 630. More than 100,000 Michiganders are in the crosshairs of a medical crisis. Even worse, they have no idea. They have a figurative bullseye in their brains. While you may think epilepsy is easy to diagnose, brand new research tells a very different story. Paula Dutman shows us what you and your doctor should be looking for. I want you to look at this because this is really a basic EEG. It's not invasive. It's not painful in any way, but this procedure could actually save your life or the life of others. Because if you think having a seizure is a big, visible, obvious event, well, you would not be correct. In fact, you could be one of 100,000 Michiganders who is an epileptic who is undiagnosed. It wasn't until Tom Vaughn of Shelby Township had this procedure done that he realized he had epilepsy. I'm going to take your glasses off. Drooling. What his wife noticed was a shaking foot and a little drool. But when Tom complained of being tired and periods of just zoning out, an alert physician at Henry Ford Health System thought he needed to be tested for epilepsy. He doesn't know he's having a seizure right he's now. He's not knowing. Uh, were you talking about his foot shaking? Right. Is that considered okay. a seizure? Well, it's a part of a seizure. Right now he's fanning his hands. The CDC has just released a study that indicates millions of Americans suffer from epilepsy and don't realize it. In Michigan, that number translates into 108,000 Michiganders who think epilepsy means a grand mal seizure, shaking and salivating. But experts now recognize that an epileptic seizure can be extremely subtle, and that's what makes them so dangerous. If you're driving, operating heavy machinery, caring for children, anything that demands 100% of your rapt attention is at risk if you're having a seizure and you don't recognize it. It's tough to say unless there is an EEG. Uh, that's a brainwave test. Tom loves woodwork and working with saws. Imagine if one of them had happened while using a saw. It can be very dangerous, yeah. You know, if they don't know it. It does affect their lives. Uh, the seizures may become stronger, more pronounced. They intensify in how they're presenting. They may have a convulsive seizure. What should families be looking for? All seizures present differently. The only way to know for sure is by measuring the brain waves with that EEG. <laughs> but a good rule of thumb is a combination of involuntary behaviors lasting for a few moments. Often the common denominators, those behaviors are followed by confusion, loss of awareness, or a dry cough, or a metallic taste in your mouth after the event. So the report by the CDC is aimed at doctors as much as patients because so many people are going undiagnosed. The bottom line is if someone has any combination of involuntary or unexplained behaviors, involuntary behaviors, doctors and patients ask for that EEG brain test to rule out epilepsy. Karen? All right, some important information for us this afternoon. Thank you, Paula. While the eyes of the nation are on Texas, there's another tropical storm brewing off the East Coast. Right now, a tropical disturbance is turning off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. It's expected to become a tropical storm by Tuesday night. Some areas of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia are expected to get three to six inches of rain in the next few days. But obviously, all eyes are on Texas at this hour, and Ben is back with the very latest for, for them. And gosh, your hearts just go out because they just keep getting pounded, and there's really no relief for at least probably to Wednesday. Yeah, once that storm finally gets north of Houston, they can finally start drying out, but it's going to be days, if not weeks, before the rivers and all the channels get back to normal. What's left is kind of toxic toxic at times in terms of just what's left in that water, water is the worst disaster if you've ever gone through flooding and I know a lot of folks here yeah. have done it on a smaller scale it is not fun uh, but back home uh, despite all the rain that's going on down there there are still parts of Metro Detroit that are looking for some rain especially out here in our west zone and you're getting it uh, we're seeing some moderate showers if not some uh, at least heavy downpours in a couple spots especially this area that's just starting to move out of Lenaway County uh, towards Michigan Avenue there Celine Milan you're going to be getting a good downpour here uh, within about the next 10 to 15 minutes. There's a thunderstorm coming out of Lapeer County. Nothing severe, but did check the heights on that. It's up to 40,000 feet, so definitely a potent storm. Uh, plenty of lightning with it as it starts to roll into western Sanilac County. You can see that coming out of Brown City, and there's quite a bit of rain with that as well. We will be seeing scattered showers and a couple thunderstorms at least to the evening hours 
before things calm down overnight. And I wish we could say the same about Harvey. Uh, that storm just continues to spin and you can see that rain just adding insult to injury around Houston and north of Galveston as that storm is continuing to churn. In fact, getting back out into the Atlantic or the Gulf as we showed you earlier. So back home tonight, we will see at least the scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms start to end towards midnight. Just a couple isolated showers as we go through the overnight hours. I don't think there's really going to be a completely dry period in the forecast for the next two days, but as we get into Tuesday, those chances are going to ramp up in the afternoon and evening. We'll see more scattered thunderstorms again. No severe weather expected tomorrow, but uh, could be wet in a couple spots for the next couple days. 63 tonight. Uh, winds will be light and variable. We will see those scattered showers mainly in the evening and things starting to dry out the further into the overnight that we get. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the mid 70s. Detroit 74 will probably hit that mark at the airport as well. South zone temperatures will be in the mid 70s. 77 will be one of our warmer numbers and we'll hit that uh, down near the state line. West zone temperatures could be some 60s here. Upper 60s in Fenton, Milford, Howell and Flint. You'll see those and in our north zone cool temperatures here too, but I think everybody's going to see right at 70 degrees or very close to it. Lexington, Port Huron could be the two exceptions in the upper 60s. So numbers go up on Wednesday. We'll finally get the rain out of here. 79 is what we're looking at for a high. Cold front comes through, gets rid of the humidity that's out there. So we'll see a very dry atmosphere for Thursday and Friday and a couple nice days before we start ramping up for the weekend. Possible shower late Saturday into Sunday. This is probably when we'll see the remnants from Harvey. Right now it looks like most of that's going to go south of us, but we're definitely going to keep an eye on it as we head towards the holiday weekend. Karen? Still had a big merger paying off for grocery customers in the checkout aisle. Also, imagine going to prison for using a plastic shopping bag. We'll tell you about a new tough new crackdown. First, the man hiding his face is a former nurse. He is the focus of a murder investigation that keeps growing, and the number of possible victims is shocking. First at four, we're tracking stories making headlines around the world today. Let's start in Germany, where a former nurse hid his face from cameras during this previous court appearance. Prosecutors say he may have killed at least 84 people. The nurse, known only as Niels H., was convicted in 2015 of two murders using overdoses of heart medication. Authorities have now exhumed dozens of bodies, and they found evidence of 84 murders. They say there could be even more because some possible victims were cremated. The country of Kenya is not messing around when it comes to fighting plastic pollution. Starting today, anyone producing, selling, or even using plastic bags will go to prison for up to four years and face a $40,000 fine. Kenya's law allows police to go after anyone even carrying plastic bags, although they'll probably target manufacturers and suppliers first. Forty nations have banned plastic bags because of their danger to the environment. In today's trending stories, you may not be able to call Whole Foods Whole Paycheck for long. Amazon just took over the grocery chain, and as promised, web, the web giant has started to trim prices on everyday items. And we're seeing lower prices on organic bananas, avocados, butter, brown eggs, and rotisserie chickens. Amazon spent more than $13 billion to buy Whole Foods and jump into the grocery market. Still ahead, first at four, one more look at what's happening with Tropical Storm Harvey right now. And you'll have a chance to help some storm victims right when we come back. It looks like a typical courtroom. All rise. It sounds like a typical courtroom. But what's happening in courtroom 336 is changing lives one at a time. Sometimes we have to come out our, our shell. We have to look outside of our tunnel to see certain things around us and see how we can help. Tonight at 11, meet the judge who's handing out her own version of a get out of jail free card. I'm here to change lives. Only on Local 4. To you. We talk a lot. The Help Me Hank Phone Bank is back in action, helping victims of Hurricane Harvey. If you can make any donation to the Red Cross, it would be so appreciated. We made it really easy for you. Just call 313-298-WDIV, 313-298-WDIV, and phone lines will be open through 630. Finally, first of all, we're going to take one more look at Tropical Storm Harvey and what we can expect for the rest of, I guess, today and the next couple of days. They cannot catch a break down there, Karen. This is a live look at uh, the rain that continues there around Houston. And in fact, when you start looking at some of those areas that are closer, um, 
those areas which you're not going to see right now, we'll show you at five, uh, have uh, rainfall totals uh, up to an, uh, 10 to 11 inches mm. today. They're looking at 50 total for storms. And that's like a, a yearly average. I think that's what I read. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ben. We will be back at 5 o'clock for Local 4 News. Inside Edition is next.